So that third string quartet was probably my least favorite out of the these three these three experimental string quartets. Uh, I think it's pretty. I mean, it's a pretty cool idea, but uh, uh, it's not as interesting as the other two. And you'll you'll see because the other two are really interesting. Um, and the third movement of that quartet, that quartet was in three movements. The uh, third quartet is in three movements, and uh, the last movement is so short. It's it's really like. I don't know, like 20 seconds or something. And I know that I, that's not new or anything. Like, you know, like Webern wrote stuff like that. But uh, in the context of this quartet, I don't know how if it works all that well because the, the other movements are a bit longer than that. But anyway, uh, that's just my two cents. So um, quartets number four and five are the next two quartets, and, and um, they're both, uh, they're kind of thought of as a pair. Uh, the f quartet four is called Dreamscape, and quartet five is called Inscape. And uh, so string quartet four is actually a quartet for uh, three string quartets. Now, in a live performance, it would be a live quartet with two pre-recorded string quartets added uh, since it since on a CD obviously they're all going to be recorded um, so one string quartet is recorded normally and one string quartet is recorded with the mics up close uh, so you get a, a really like in your face kind of texture really and a really thin kind of sound and the the third quartet is recorded with the the mics um, far away, so you get lots lots of reverb, very spacey environment. So the, the string quartet number four is all about the contrast uh, between these three textures, normal or these three sounds for the quartet. You have like the normal sound the in-your-face thin sound and the really reverby kind of sound and it's a really cool quartet uh, he pulls it off really well and it's one of my favorite um, quartets in the in the set uh, the the language the harmonic language um, there are there are sections where it sounds really avant-garde-ish but uh, a lot of it sounds really modal to me I don't know if it's actually written in a mode, but uh, yeah, a lot of it sounds like it could be played in like a church or something. A very uh, ancient feel to it. So um, it's all in one movement, and the first half is kind of about contrasting these these um, these textures. To get, and contrasting them with each other and the, the dynamism between these te three textures. Uh, and then the second half of the quartet is um, uh, a, a big huge build up with all the textures together and the climax is, is all the quartets um, playing playing all together at, at forte. And it's a really great climax of the piece and then there's a coda and it's cool. So anyway, I'll shut up. <laughs> I'll play a little bit for you here.
that was that was String Quartet 4, Dreamscape. Uh, now String Quartet 5 is the last of the um, super experimental um, quartets. And this is, number 5 is probably <laughs> my other favorite one of the set, along with 4, and 2 also, and 10. Uh, 2, 4, 5, and 10 are my favorites of the of the set. Well, we'll get to 10. But, um, so 5, 5 is a microtonal string quartet. And, um, the, the first two move it's in three movements, and the first two movements, um, only use tones and microtones within the, uh, between B and D. So, um, um, the first two the first two movements are written within the space of a minor third, and uh, it's incredible the the sound he gets and the amount of variety to the piece he actually gets. It's really surprising. I had to when I was listening to it for the first time, I had to go and check at the piano to see if it really stayed within that minor third of B and D, and it does. It really does. Um, the third movement is still the third movement is still microtonal. However, um, it it spreads its wings um, farther than B and D. I wasn't sure how to word that, but uh, yeah, it's really cool. Um, I'll play for you the beginning of this quartet, but it really. This quartet really grows out of nothing, pretty much, and the the beginning is really the all the instruments just kind of centering around the first note. So the beginning is kind of boring. So, but I will play you the beginning, and then I'll I'll uh, play you uh, a little bit farther into the the first movement when it starts to pick up. Okay, so here's the beginning. Here is where it starts to pick up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 